Oh, I'll watch the front. Yep, on glass. Glass right now. He's yep. crawling up the glass. Nice lag. Take glass. All right. I'm going after him. I don't have any nades. Ah! Really? Ah! Let's do this. He ran back to right container, left side, peeking it, peeking it. On my way. Hold on, we're on our way. Oh, the monkey's in there. Oh shoot, there's another one! Got what got far one? Left one left left wall, left wall, hugging it. Hostile. <laughs> Dead. Three Good kill. Arm. And out the parking lot. One down. Oh shoot, hello. <laughs> Lay down, lay down. Nice. <laughs> oh, look at him, goddamn pussy! Got him. Woo! Oh no. Got you first. I've wanted to make this video for months. Escape from Tarkov, love it or hate it, has had some of the most excellently designed maps in the realistic shooter genre. Each map requires the player to constantly balance their risk for reward, and with the solid gunplay and movement that Tarkov brings to the table, this map in particular makes for one of the most immersive combat locations that I can imagine. Interchange is my favorite map on Escape from Tarkov. It's a super mall with an IKEA <coughs> idea furniture warehouse, a luxury ultra mall with food courts, clothing, and gadget shops, the supply store of Goshen which is half on fire, and Ollie, a Russian version of your local Home Depot, but now it's green. This is an immersive map, and I absolutely love it. Ever since I got into realistic shooters, there was always some extravagant map that I'd be playing on with a hysterically gigantic cliff in it, or a cityscape where buildings could fall down, or the islands of Greece, or the sands of Syria. All of these locations are great for large-scale war zones and wowing the player with impressive large vistas, but sometimes big open spaces can get well, boring. Interchange is different. No other shooter game has come close to the scale and the detail that this map boasts around every corner. No other shooter game's engine could probably even handle this map. There's hundreds of rooms, thousands of tiny objects, trash, dirt, obstacles that bring this map to life. It tells the story of a once strong standing super mall that has been transformed into a cave for Tarkov's most desperate survivors. But why is Interchange my favorite map? Why not Customs, Woods, or even the new Labs map? What makes Interchange different? different in Escape from Tarkov than other shooters out there. Interchange is special in the realm of how much the user can relate to the map. Most of the players of this game, including yourself watching, have once been inside a super mall similar to this one. They've seen how many people could be walking around the different shops, or how filled the parking lot was, or how vibrant the advertisements or merchandise were. And for that to be transformed into this... is impressively dark. That relatable feeling that the player has with the map is what makes it so much more immersive. We've all played realistic military shooter games, but not many of them included multiplayer maps in relatable locations as detailed and as large as this one. Explosive firefights echoing off the walls of a super mall is definitely within all shooter gamers' dreams, and this is what brings the player into the game even more. This could happen. This location could easily be real. I honestly wonder how many people were working on this map and for how long. I mean, you're talking about nearly 65 different shops inside the main mall alone. This is arguably more detail than any AAA company has put into any multiplayer shooter map, and I'd classify Battlestate as quite a small dev studio in comparison. All of these shops have different brand names, lighting, color schemes, merchandise. Tarkov does indoor locations very well. There's plenty of detail in any location here. These places look legitimately lived in, and the game also runs these
these locations at not a huge cost to your computer's performance, it's great. Outdoor locations in Tarkov aren't exactly handsome, though. The grass, the ground, the trees, the distant shadows, they look very low-budget, Unity, asset, flip game sort of stuff. In comparison, the indoors of any building in this game looks AAA and are just beautifully detailed. The reason for this is most likely engine limitations, and I believe Battlestate is eventually going to overhaul the foliage in this game to make the outdoor locations look and play better. In Tarkov, teams of players inside this interchange mall don't have any means of friendly or foe identification, so when looking at another player, knowledge of the exact shop he or she is standing under is really key to knowing if that player is on your team. You can't just say, there to the left, or there over there, like any other shooter game, as this map is so realistically complicated to the point that the player must begin learning each and every shop, as well as all the pathways throughout the Super Mall, to effectively give callouts to his team. And this is where Interchange shines. Team play in Interchange is one of the most challenging communication experiences you can find in any shooter game right now, and that's not a bad thing. It's so easy to get lost in the hallways, circle around, and accidentally think a teammate is an enemy, that even from Rai Group that plays this game on a regular basis, we still struggle with naming some of the very uncommon locations on the map. What that means though, is that you don't only win fights with good aim and fast reactions, but map knowledge is huge here. Small ledges you can jump on to gain that perfect angle, support beams you can climb to become invisible to unaware enemies below, hiding in the rooms that have no lights on, or organizing five-man formations to be able to cover the entire upstairs of the main mall. Yeah, we've done that. Having a well-experienced group of buddies effectively communicating to each other is extremely effective at killing enemy squads here. How much skill each team member has alone means nothing. The teamwork and communication means everything. Oh man! I'm oh, I see him. They're in uh, tech light. Got They're it. Tech light. Got it. I don't think he saw me. I'm getting my stamina back, so I can I'll be able to get a, a shot on that in a second. Yeah, I'm at 20 health, so I might rush them. 20 health. Oh my god. Or 20, uh, 20 drinks. Sorry. Oh, okay. Do it. They're gonna rush hear me, up. Though. Rush up those stairs. Hang on, Drew. I'll flush them out to you. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna Kobe some nades up into them. Okay. One's really hurt. Left? Are they left or right? Uh, one is right behind the shelves. Got one. One nade out. He's behind the shelves. Another nade out. Is that you up here? Another nade out. I'm Jamie You're Spot. Escalator, right? I'm Jamie Spot. Yep. All right, cover me, boys. Got one. He ran out towards Jamie. I think that's it. Two are dead in the hall towards Jamie. <laughs> oh, is this you coming out? Clear. That's it. That's okay. it. That was a perfect execution. Woo! Oh my god. But sometimes the main mall itself isn't where the magic happens. There also is three large stores around the mall, Idea, Goshen, and Ollie. These can additionally have very large and explosive firefights erupt in them too, and AI scavs patrol the areas that players most commonly travel through as well, meaning that getting through these areas quietly is a challenge in itself. It's unpredictable where the big firefights will be in Interchange, and as the map is just so large and diverse that the combat never happens in the same exact spot twice. There are hot spots, usually with the highways between spawn and loot locations, but it's very common to patrol those hot spots and never see a single other player throughout an entire raid. Then you head to the outskirts of the map thinking that everybody has left, walk into a dark computer office to loot the old PC cases, and then suddenly have five players patrol past you as you cower behind the door. Oh my gosh. Oh. Holy crap.
just sit in the back. Repack really fast. Everybody's here right now. I killed him. How did I get flashed though? What just flashed me? It was so worth it though. It was so worth it. I'm so happy with how that raid just went. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, seriously, that entire fight just occurred in a bathroom. Also, you like footsteps, right? Sound is everything. I mean, imagine the echo of a gunshot in an empty abandoned shopping mall. It'd be pretty loud, right? Imagine turning your volume up so high that you can hear people tiptoeing three shops down and then immediately just contracting tinnitus when your friend shoots his Mosin next to your ear. <sighs> In Tarkov, the sound system is pretty dang good. I've never been in the military, nor had any professional military training, but I have played a lot of airsoft inside abandoned hotels. In one of them, it was tense, it was pitch black, objects littered the floors. I mean, you're hearing people trip over stuff 50 meters down the hall at 3 a.m. It's great. In real life, our hearing is so effective at knowing what's going on. Your brain can detect the difference between tennis shoes and boots running on concrete 50 meters away. That's nuts. In Tarkov, it's pretty similar to how airsoft works in nighttime or indoors. With so much gear on you, making noise whenever you move, you have to stop and listen to the indoor environment around you to be able to hear others. And this is where the combat becomes one level more intense. Sound is everything. Unlike Battlefield where you're running and jumping everywhere, any small sound in Tarkov announces your position and actions to any other experienced player around you. A footstep on a wood surface tells the knowledgeable player three shops down that you just ran full sprint into a certain wooden floored shop. I hear him again? Wood again? Yeah, I think that's generic. Is there wood on Papa John's? No. Yeah, there is. No. Yeah, well, isn't it wood floors? No, no, it's normal. It's concrete or whatever. Staying quiet, low, and sneaky is the way to win fights on this map, as the experienced players can ID your exact location merely by the sounds your feet make on certain floors. Talking about movement and footsteps and such, the pacing of combat is interesting here. Scale is relative. If you've ever watched my 20 plus videos on Tarkov that are probably solely on this map, you'll notice that sometimes I'm held up in a single small restaurant for 30 minutes or so, defending myself from enemy squads. I love the way that Tarkov's game mechanics affect how people act in combat, as this game very much punishes rushing enemy positions or acting careless for one's life. If there's an enemy in a dark closet at the back of a store in Battlefield, you run straight in there going 20 miles per hour and spray and pray until the enemy is dead. In a real life situation though, you'd care about your life. You, you wouldn't want to ever risk the chance of dying. Any move like that would mean you have a high chance of death. You are, in real life, much more fearful of death. Some games try to keep you scared for your life to make the game feel more tense and feel like every life counts. The games like Squad give you a lengthy 45 second respawn timer each death and usually spawn you all the way back behind the front line, meaning that you have to spend some time moving back into combat again before you can have fun again. In Day Z, you have hours and hours worth of gear on you that you've collected over time that you don't want to lose. In Tarkov though, if you die, you lose all of your gear and are also entirely out of that certain rate. You cannot go back in or pick up your gear. You can't join your friends again. You can't do anything in that raid. You have to wait until all your friends either die or escape and then join a different raid to play that same map again. Additionally, with the movement speed actually being at a realistic level, people aren't sprinting all over the place at 20 miles per hour. The movement speed is rational. It makes sense if this was a real life scenario. 
Most of the time you spot into the player, they're moving around the map at a decent slow walking speed. This makes the combat even more immersive as you can easily have a 30 minute long firefight in only one or two shops or just a very small location in the map. The lack of superhuman movement speed makes the large mall seem even bigger and seem even more real. I mean, just compare the running speed in Battle for Combat to Tarkov and you see what I mean. This area seems like it's just part of a video game. The player has little to no punishment for running full sprint at superhuman speeds, and therefore any large area on the map seems even smaller and seems so much less real. In Tarkov, this area is just tangible. Realistic tactics for indoor room clearing can actually apply here. Attaching yourself to cover, leapfrogging, suppressive fire, flanking, all of these indoor strategies become much more realistic once movement speed is slowed to a human amount and sounds of footsteps begin reaching realistic distances. With every corner you turn, you slowly begin to understand this map, learning its secret exits, the hot spots, the scav patrols. You begin to feel safe like you understand the map to its fullest extent, until suddenly a player kills you from a location you believed was once a dead end, and you learn something new again. All of this comes together to create a very exciting shooter experience. You feel like you're actually in this destroyed shell of a society. You feel cold, you feel alone, you feel fear.